this problem here, <clears throat> I have a sled, um, and it says that this sled has a weight. It has a weight of 52 newtons, okay? So let me draw, I'm just gonna draw out this picture. So here's my sled, okay? Um, so the weight of this is 52 newtons. Now you guys, the weight points straight down. This sled, because it doesn't say otherwise, we're going to assume it's on a flat surface, okay? So what that means is that the perpendicular force or the normal force, the force that pushes the two surfaces together, that is going to be equal to the weight. It's going to be 52 newtons, all right? And then uh, we're pulling, we're pulling the sled with 18 newtons. So that is going to be our applied force. So we have an applied force of 18 newtons. Now the other thing that's important here um, is it says that it's moving at a constant speed, all right? Um, if it's moving at a constant speed, that means the acceleration is zero. And if the acceleration is zero, that means the net force is zero. And in order for the net force to be zero, we already have an applied force of 18 newtons. We're gonna need an opposing force of 18 newtons. Okay, so 18 newtons will be the opposing force. Now, in this case, um, the only, this opposing force, there's only one opposing force and it's friction. So our force of friction is 18 newtons. So if I were to write all of this, all the important stuff that I know on the side, I know that the force of friction has to be 18. I know that the normal force is going to be 52. And then it asks me for the coefficient of friction. The coefficient of friction, that's my question mark. Well, I gave you an equation that said that the force of friction was equal to mu times that normal force, times the force that pushes the two surfaces together. So then this would be, um, this would be 18 equals a coefficient of friction times 52. I gotta get rid of that 52, so I'll divide it by both sides. These are gonna cancel. And mu will be 18 divided by 52. I actually don't know what that is. Does anybody mm -hmm. know? Oh, 0.35. 0.35? Yeah. That sounds right. And remember, the coefficient of friction does not have units. Coefficients don't have units. Because it would be newtons divided by newtons, no units here. So the, remember the coefficient of friction, what it tells you is it tells you how much of this normal force gets translated into friction. So in this case, it's just over a third. 35% of the normal force will get translated to friction. Wait, could you repeat that? Like, what does the U do? The, um... Wait. The, uh... thing, the thing that looks like a U, what does it tell you? Yeah, so that the thing that looks like a U, that's it's actually called mu. Um, it's the Greek letter mu, and that's the coefficient of friction. So the coefficient of friction, what it tells you is it tells you what percentage of the normal force, what percentage of the force that's pushing those two surfaces together um, gets translated into friction. So in this case, the coefficient of friction is 0.35. So what that means is 35% of this normal force ends up being friction. Okay. Okay. Now mu, will, it, uh, it won't change. So uh, that's, that's basically what it is. It's a measurement of the bumpiness between the two surfaces, how well they slide past each other, all right? Um, so the, the coefficient of friction won't change. What I could do though is like, for example, if I wanted to make this sled harder to move, I could put more weight on it. So instead of like, let's say there's a little kid on there now, 
I could kick them off and I could sit on it. I'm significantly larger than a little kid, right? So um, my weight would provide a bigger normal force. And that bigger normal force, 35% of it would get translated into friction. So the frictional force would go up, but the coefficient of friction won't. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. And, and you guys kind of know this stuff. You know that um, if you add weight, it's harder to pull that sled, right? Why is it harder? Well, it's because um, the normal force gets bigger and so the friction force gets bigger. Now, Wait, I... okay, I'm sorry, say that again, ask. Um, why, didn't, why did you assume that 52? Because when you were explaining this before, you said that weight also equals F net. No, so that it all depends. It all depends on the direction of motion, right? And it depends on what kind of surface that we're, we're on. So um, in this case, in this case, this force, this weight is not going to be the net force. Because it's going down. Right. The weight is pushing straight down and the sled is moving from side to side. Okay. So if, if it's um, pulling side to side, then it's going to be a F net force. So, well, the net force in the direction of motion, right? The net force would be all of the applied forces minus all of the opposing forces, okay? And then, so in this case, the net force is zero. The reason it's zero is because it says it's not accelerating. So if there's zero acceleration, there has to be zero net force. And the reason that's true, so I'm glad you're asking these questions. Um, the reason that's true is remember the the most basic form of Newton's second law is F equals MA, right? And so it doesn't matter what the mass is, anything times zero. So if the acceleration is zero, anything times zero is going to be zero. So if if you're moving at a constant speed, that means there's no acceleration, there's no net force. So in that case, F net will be zero. Now there is an applied force, you are pulling it, and there is an opposing force, friction. And so that's why those two things have to be equal to each other. So when I do positive 18 plus negative 18, it'll end up being zero. Okay, got it. Okay. Yeah, I guarantee, I guarantee you guys, if you have a question, someone else has that question, right? So make sure you ask, ask, ask if you, um, if you need some help. And then, uh, once again, because this is on a flat surface, the force that's pushing the two surfaces together will be the weight. So that will be the normal force. Now, what you guys did in your lab was a little different. So what you did in your lab was something like this, right? Where you put a block or some sort of object on a ramp and then you knew the angle of that ramp while you measured it and you let this slide down at a constant rate, okay? Now, I want to do a few problems where it's not sliding down at a constant rate, where it actually has some acceleration. So in this, in this uh, example, we have our little picture drawn. We have a box that's put on a ramp. It has a mass of five kilograms. Now we put it on an incline and the incline is 25 degrees. Now this box starts sliding down the ramp. And it would do that because the frictional force is going to be smaller than the portion of the weight that's pulling it down the ramp. And it's accelerating down the ramp at 0.2 meters per second per second, or 0.2 meters per second squared. Let me try to rewrite that, that looks ugly. Eh, that's a little better. Okay, um, now what, what it's asking is it's asking what is the coefficient of friction here, All right? How would I find that? Well, 
there's a few things I have to do, all right? I have to, first of all, I know the weight. And I know the weight is pointing straight down towards the center of the Earth, all right? Um, remember I told you before that weight is mass times gravity. So here the weight would be 5 times 9.8. And I could do that math in my head. Or can't, yeah, 49. <laughs> I made myself worried for a second. So the weight, you guys, pointing straight down towards the center of the Earth, that's 49 Newtons. Now, in this case, this is not the perpendicular force. The weight is not acting at a right angle. So I have to figure out, wait a minute, what is the component of the weight? And it would help if I could draw a straight line. Um, what is the component of the weight that's pointing straight into the surface? That's something that we're, we call the normal force. And then, what is the component of the weight that's making it slide down the ramp? We've been calling that the parallel force. It's not supposed to be F11, it's F parallel, right? Now there will be one more force that's acting on here, and that's going to be friction, okay? Friction is going to be mu times that normal force. So here's what, here's what I could do. I could first find out, well, what is the net force that's acting on the box? What's the one force between these two? If, if I were to redraw this box, there's really just two forces acting in the direction of motion. There's the component of the weight that we call the parallel force. And then there's friction that's trying to make it stop from sliding. Okay, so if I were to find the net force, the one force that replaced those two, what would it be? Well, the net force is the mass, which is five, times the acceleration, which is 0.2, and that will end up being one Newton. Now I know you guys too, I know that the net force is equal to the forces that are making it slide down the ramp. So that would be the parallel force, that would be the applied force in this case, minus the forces that are trying to stop it from sliding down. And in this case, that will be friction. Now, I gave, you, um, I gave you simple formulas for the parallel force and for, um, and for that normal force. Remember, those are just components of the weight. So this angle here is going to be the same as this angle here, remember. And so F parallel would be the weight, which is mass times gravity times the sine of the angle. And then friction is going to be mu times the weight times the cosine of the angle because the normal force would be the weight times the cosine of that angle. If you don't already have these, add these to your equation list. And then so here, uh, yeah, I'm listening. I'm sorry. Um, could, could we say that like the F uh, parallel and the F friction, um, they're kind of similar to like, uh, like applied force or opposing force? Yeah, well, yes. So like friction, can... yeah, friction is always going to be an opposing force. So friction will always be FO, always. Okay. Now you can have more than one opposing force, but friction will always be one of them, assuming that you have friction, right? Sometimes in pretend physics world, we pretend like there's no friction. In real, in real life, there always is, right? And then this parallel force, that, that's the component of the weight that's gonna make it slide down the ramp. Now for these problems, um, 
it'll always be an applied force, right? Because it's always trying to make it slide down the ramp. Tomorrow, we're going to make things a little trickier. And we're going to add, we're going to add a pulley up here with the weight that's trying to pull the box this way up the ramp. So we'll have an additional force tomorrow that's trying to pull the box up the ramp. We'll have this that's trying to pull the box down the ramp. And whichever way the box goes, um, that'll be the applied force. And then the other one would be an opposing force. So in those problems, we'll have more than one opposing force. Um, I have one more question. OK. Um, using the equations, the F parallel, we, um and the F uh, friction, mm -hmm. the ones that you just wrote, for the sine and cosine angles, um, is it supposed to be that, like, for the lab, when we found the angle, were we just supposed to use the angle twice at the, for the, you know, you know what I mean? Yep, yeah, that's exactly right. And um, actually, hold on to that question for one second. And okay. I'm going to add a problem in uh, that's just like your lab. We'll, do, we'll basically do the lab again, right? I'll show you just so everybody could check to make sure that, um, you know, that, that they did it right, okay? Okay, so hold on to that thought for one second. So now, um, you guys, th these problems, they do require a lot of writing. And um, I think I said this, but this is as hard as physics gets for the entire year. I mean, this is pretty hard and um, you know, I appreciate you guys sticking with me because this is tough, right? Um, this is the uh, this is as tough as it gets, and you're at home trying to learn it. So, I I appreciate it, right? Um, and trust me, when when we're together, when we actually do have some some uh, time we'll have an extra half hour a day under this new schedule. Um, it'll, it'll help. It'll make more sense. Okay. So even if I don't get to see you guys for another nine weeks. Um, so anyway, I'm sorry. Uh, let's, so if we want to find the coefficient of friction, you guys, we know the net force is one. Okay. Um, we know this parallel force, that's going to be the weight which we already said was 49 newtons times the sine of the angle, so the sine of 25. And then we're going to subtract out friction. Um, so that'll be the coefficient of friction times the weight again, 49, times the cosine of the angle. Okay. Um, now we need to pull out our calculators. I cannot do this math in my head. So uh, 49 times the sine of 25, can someone tell me what the answer to that is? Twenty point seven. Twenty point seven. All right, and then. Can someone tell me what 49 times the cosine of 25 is? Forty-four point four. Are we supposed to close the parentheses when I'm um, multiplying 49 times sine? Uh. It shouldn't matter. It sh okay. Yeah, it shouldn't matter. So now, now you guys, this is just algebra. So I got to get this 20.7 to the other side. It's being added, so I would subtract it. When you subtract it from both sides, you'll get 19.7 equals negative mu 44.4. And then if you want to get mu by itself, the coefficient of friction, you need to divide both sides by negative 44.4. So that negative will end up going away. And the coefficient of friction is going to be 19.7 divided by 44.4. Be like 0.47. That's my guess and check.
Yeah, and I mean, if you want, it's 0.4436. No, we'll just do it. We'll just do it to two places. 0.44. So that was, I mean, there's a lot of moving parts there. There was a lot of work. But in essence, you guys, what it boils down to is that this box has two forces that contribute to the net force, a component of the weight that's trying to make it slide down the ramp that we're calling the parallel force and then friction, which is trying to stop it from sliding down the ramp. Now, let's say, let's make this like your lab. Um, I'm going to go on that page. Okay, so let's make it like your lab and um, let's erase all of this stuff. Except for that. Okay. Um, give me one second. There, that's better. Okay. So in your lab, we're going to say uh, a five kilogram box is placed on a ramp that has an incline of 25 degrees. We'll keep that with respect to the ground. And we'll say that the box is sliding down the ramp with an acceleration of zero. What is the coefficient of friction? Okay, so in this case, you guys, if we look at this box, this box is going to have two forces. Once again, it'll have two forces that are trying to make it either slide down the ramp or not slide down. And those two forces, one of them is a component of the weight called the parallel force, right? That we're calling the parallel force. And the other one, is the force of friction. So this is exactly like our lab. And we're gonna say this is 25 degrees. So I put, you know, I put a tissue box. Oh, that would be a really heavy tissue box. Um, I don't, we put a box of, uh, I don't know, a can of beans. It was a really big can. Uh, we put it on a ramp and we lifted the, the end up till it just started sliding down. So it had zero acceleration. Now remember, if it has zero acceleration, that means that the net force is zero. And because the net force are the applied forces minus the opposing forces, if, if I take the applied force minus the opposing force and it equals zero, that means the applied force is equal to the opposing force, right? And our applied force, the force that's trying to make it slide down the ramp, that's the component of the weight that we're calling the parallel force. And then our opposing force, the force that we're, is trying to stop it from sliding down the ramp is friction. So what you guys did is you said, okay, well, I know, I know this parallel force is mg, the weight, times the sine of the angle and then I know the friction force is mu times mg, which is the weight, times the cosine of the angle, right? Now, in this situation, in this case, we, we said before, you can see mg is on this side, mg is on this side, they're going to cancel out. That won't happen all the time, right? It didn't happen in our last example, but it happens here because there's only two forces and they're exactly the same. So you guys can, you know, this is one of the things that I used to have you do if you were in, if you were in school, is I would have you slide this block down and then um, I would have you put a weight on top of the block it doesn't matter how heavy this block is, it always starts sliding down at the same angle. Because in this situation, the weight doesn't matter. All right? So then, um, so then for mu, mu equals the sine of the angle divided by the cosine of the angle. So in this case, mu would be the sine of 25 divided by the cosine of 25. Does anybody know what that is? Point 
47. Okay. Point 47. So, so this, this is exactly like the lab that you guys did. So you put one object on here, right? You lifted this up till it just started sliding down. You got the angle, and then you can use this calculation right here to find the coefficient of friction. And you, you're actually using all of these equations, but the weight cancels out, so it doesn't matter, right? So this becomes the most important part of it. And then um, once you find, or uh, once you do this once, I wanted you to do it three times, just so you could have better data, take the average. You only need to calculate mu once, you guys, right? You could just take the average of this angle and calculate it once. If you calculated it three times, just take the average coefficient of friction. And then so you should have three coefficients of friction. And what you should see is that um, the rougher the surface is, the higher the coefficient of friction was. Kind of the smoother the surface is, the smaller it was. Um, when we do this at school, I actually have blocks that Dr. Ruflo and I made um, where there's sandpaper on one side, there's those little furniture mover um, discs on one side, there's, there's some blocks that are just wood, so it's wood on wood. But I'm sure you guys did something similar with your...